Hello and welcome to a new Luna Lua tutorial. In this episode I am going to talk about particle effects. First I want to mention that there are many default particle effects already defined in some X data scripts particles. There are uh, various particles, prefix with P and a ribbon trail with R. I'm only going to go over part of particle effects in this video, but there is also a ribbon example over here on the left, which you can check out for yourself on your own time. There's also a lot of uh, particles graphics used by those preset effects in data graphics particles, which you can pick some from for your own usage. I'm going to use the Starman Sparkle for my own particle system. I'm going to copy that in here, and I'm going to copy the particles example I and I file as well. These are the two files we'll need to use for our particle system today. So opening the file, we can see various different properties from the rate that defines how many uh, spawn to the texture which uh, we want to insert the file name into. So having put that into there, first I want to just test how it looks. So the first thing we want to do is load particles. Once we have particles loaded, we can create our own emitter. I'm going to call this one the sparkle emitter because of the sparkly effect that I'm using from the Starman. You can use particles emitter. There's a typo here, which I will fix in a second. I'm still post-production angel because I am recording this just after the sound episode where my microphone went down. But yeah, the overload for a particles dot emitter is the x coordinate, the y coordinate, and the name of the INI file we want to load. Now that we have an emitter, we can see that absolutely nothing happens yet. There is a reason for that, and it's that particles do not actually draw anything by default, and you need to draw them by yourself. This has multiple benefits. You can customize the way in which they are drawn by yourself. For example, one thing we will make use of in this episode is changing the priority of the particles, which is not defined in the INI and can be done uh, at runtime by just changing the way you draw the particles. So if we uh, put down sparkle emitter draw with a colon this time, we can put down the priority in parentheses and we can still see nothing. This is because currently the x and y coordinate are just zero, so it's hanging out somewhere in limbo. If I put down an on start though, we can use a little handy shortcut that Particle Sotua has, which is uh, the ability to attach the emitter to various things like the player, the camera, an NPC, stuff like that. We're gonna attach it to the player, and as you can see now, there is some weird particle effect just spawning on top of our player, which is not really looking all that nice. But on the flip side, uh, we are actually seeing something. That's already neat. We also already have some uh, things we might want to change from looking at that. For example, the frames Y. We actually have three frames on this sprite, so of course we want to change that. And we do not actually have uh, more frames X, so we can just remove that. We can remove everything we don't want to change. Not really making use of that here today, but whatever. You can also change the lifetime to make it uh, be alive for a shorter amount of time. Everything here is measured in seconds, so that it makes stuff easier to measure in that regard. I also set the rate to 50 so that more particles spawn, but uh, silly me wrote it to the wrong file. So now that that's fixed, we can see that the trail is much smoother than before, and creates a really neat effect that follows the player and even animates through the different animation frames that we have specified. It's a little bit clean though for what I'm going for, because I want to show you what these other things do. First I want to change the frame speed a little so that it's animating faster. Now it's animating every 4 frames, then 8 frames. And another thing we can do is we can add an offset to where they're spawned. This can be a range, uh, which if you specify a range of numbers from for example minus 16 to 16, you separate them with a colon to basically say, hey, I want a number between these two values. So if we restart now, we can see that the sparkles have started coming out in much different positions. And they give Mario a very glamorous look. The next thing I want to adjust, though, is the color, because 
plain white and just kind of disappearing is a little bit weird. There are multiple things you can do with the color, for example, the, uh, change the color flat out, and you can also change the color over time, which I'm going to do. It's all in hexadecimal, so you need to use that. But on the left hand side you specify the little key points to which the colors map. On the right hand side you can specify the colors. For example, I added a key point at 0 0.9 here and I added uh, a white with zero opacity on the right hand side. There are more things you can do over time. For example, what I'm going to make use of is scale time, which basically changes the scale of the particle over time. So I'm going to use the same key point over here and then add a zero at the end so that it remains at uh, scale one and then reduces to scale zero at the end. Since the particle is only alive for a very short amount of time, maybe the values I chose are a little bit, little bit extreme. So I'm going to reduce that to like 0.5 and now it has a longer time throughout it, which it can fade out. And as you can see, there's a more smooth fade out at the end of the trail going on now. So the next thing we want to do is change the priority so that it draws behind Mario. Which is a very simple change. We can just take a look at how he sparkles now without the sparkles obscuring his face. Another thing we can change is the speed X and speed Y. We can change this just like the offsets with um, different speed values in a range or just as a static value. We can also change the speed X and speed Y over time. For example, what I can do here is slow it down at the end. At the start it's going to be like a multiplier of 1 on the speed and at the end a multiplier of 0. So it gradually moves down to 0. And there are other things you can do, like change the rotation and rotation speed of the particle. For example, I can make an initial rotation of 0 to 360, and then add a rotation speed of minus 20 to 20, which is uh, the angle per second it moves. A blend, of, uh, an additive blend, is also something that's possible, which like just changes the way the particles are drawn, which I. Uh, haven't fully adjusted to yet, but as you can see here, the rotation and the speed of the particles has been randomized even further, creating a much more uh, chaotic effect. Now I want to change the color here from flat white to something else, a little bit more orange. And one thing you will notice is that it turns more yellow at the tip. This is actually something as a result of the additive blend. Because an additive blend, zero opacity basically means that it's uh, still using the additive blend. So as you can see here, there is now a completely additive blend with a more orange tinted particle effect over the vine than there is over the background. One thing I don't change here, which I uh, should have changed in retrospect, is change the uh, last call time value to 0000000000. Just so that uh, it properly fades out again, which it currently doesn't do because of the additive effect. There can also be a collision to added to the particle, which always takes a toll on the performance, but if you need something like that, you can do it, but please don't do it with like thousands of particles in the effect. These other values are all things I will not go into in this tutorial, however, you are free to experiment with them yourself, as there is this uh, te handy template file, and you see here how easy it is to set up. You can change the rate to zero in the file so that the file doesn't emit anything anymore and then you can control the emission through Lua. We then say, for example, uh, we add a check. If the player is currently pressing the run key then we spawn these sparkles but only one per frame so that it's not too many. So when I press run the sparkles come and else they are not here. This is nice and all but it might be a little bit easy to abuse, so we can add like more conditions to, on top of that. So if that's the case, and if the player is moving faster than a speed of 5, then we can uh, also do this. And now if I hold the run button, it only sparkles when I am running really, really fast. But as you can see, it doesn't work when moving left. This is because when the player is facing left and moving left, uh, its speed is actually negative. So we can use abs for an absolute value. So now we only have these sparkles when we are running really, really fast throughout the scene.
There are some more things with particles, so which you can do, but which you should avoid if you can, because they also uh, add more computational uh, stress on the program, but it's not as severe as collision. So you can uh, change parameters of uh, these particle INI files at runtime. For example, uh, using the setParam function here, you can change the speed x of a particle depending on a value you have to find elsewhere. For example, you can uh, enter another range here if you need to, but you can also do something like make it dependent on the player's uh, speed x. Just like here, I'm going to set it to the negative of the speed x. I'm going to do the same for the speed y. Now, one thing I didn't notice at the time is that there is a type one set param right now, which I'm going to fix right now. The set is not par uh, capitalized. So of course one thing you can do is use very big values, like 50 pixels per second is going to be much more noticeable than what we had before. And as you can see, those sparkles are flying now. It's like Mario is ejecting them out of his body, which is uh, very easy to notice now. It looks really kind of neat. So you can use this to manipulate the uh, values of particles at runtime if you need to. You can also do this for every other uh, parameter. It's not just speed x and speed y, you can do this for like colors, other stuff, and yeah. That's basically all I had to say today, so I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.